All right, I have a fresh install of Ubuntu here, and I want to show you some of the applications that I install when I have a fresh system here to get things going. I personally like installing everything from the terminal, so I'll show you that method, but you can always use the Ubuntu App Store if you hit the Ubuntu Software Center. Here, this little orange bag, you will get the App Store, and you can search for any of those applications using the search bar and finding whatever you want. But let's use the terminal today because it's just so much easier, so much smoother. Hit activities, type in term, and you'll find yourself a terminal. There's not much to understand here in Ubuntu in order to actually install stuff through the terminal. I'll show you everything you need to know right now. The first thing you need to do is run sudo apt update. This will update your repositories here in on your Ubuntu system. That way you can have the latest and greatest mirrors to pull from and the latest updates for your software. Type in your administrative user's password and press enter. Notice that it's updating the repos here and now I'll clear things out and do sudo apt install and my package name. The first one I want to do is obs-studio. If you ever have to guess what the package name is, you can tab a couple times to see if it'll try autofilling for you. Anyways, I'm gonna do this and it says that it's already installed. If it's not, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna install this? You're gonna select the yes option, which is default, and it's going to install things. Another thing I like installing is a better media player here in Ubuntu. I got a couple files here I'll show you. I got this test MKV file and notice it says MPEG AAC decoder. It's a high profile decoder and, re and it's required to play this file, but it's not installed. So by default, the media player here is a little bit lacking of codecs. So that's another thing I like to install. This MP4 won't run as well, so I'm going to install a new media player. The one I like using, I'll do it through here again, sudo apt install VLC. VLC is great, and I already have it here. As you can tell, I tend to go through these things pretty quick. Notice if I type in VLC, I can actually use it. I can open a file. Let's try opening up that same file that we had before, and look at that, everything's working just fine now. VLC Media Player is one of my favorites because it has so many codecs in here and incorporates the FFMPEG, which is an amazing open source library and is another thing I highly suggest installing. If you want to be able to go between various different media codecs, this is a great tool to have. You can simply install it by doing sudo apt install FFMPEG. Here it says, do you want to continue? Press enter for the default yes. That will install FFMPEG for you. If I clear things out, now I can use this great tool here. Of course, I just tried running it. Just to give you an example, it says here, if you really want to use it, you have to have an input file, an output file, and various different switches in order to run. It's definitely worth looking into how to use FFmpeg because it's, again, a fascinating, all-encompassing tool for media. The next thing is I don't necessarily like Firefox. So I like to install the Brave browser. I do sudo apt install Brave, but notice that there's no source package for Brave. This time, let's go to the Ubuntu Software Center and notice they do have Brave here in their repo as a snap package. You can install it directly from here. I'm gonna run this by typing in my password and authenticating. This will install Brave browser for me directly. It's a great browser that comes with an ad blocker installed doesn't automatically track you and is probably safer than the current browser that you're using. And best of all, it's Chromium based. It's based off the Chromium open source project. So you know what you're expecting. Notice whenever it's done, it'll say remove here. Now we can launch it from our activities. Just type in Brave and look at that. We have the Brave web browser launching. Welcome to Brave, the new internet, and it's here. Another thing I like doing is installing the Duck Duck go extension. That way I'm using DuckDuckGo instead of Google or any other search engine. We can go up here to the tabs instead, hit up the settings, go to the search engine and change the search engine to DuckDuckGo. It's Google by default and I don't want to be using Google. So I'm going to again hit DuckDuckGo and that's it. Now you're using DuckDuckGo. So if I search like Savvy Nick on the web, look what I get back results in. Yes, that's right. DuckDuckGo. All right, moving on. We've added some of the essentials in, great, but another thing I always check is in settings. So to get to privacy, if you load into the settings, go down and check through until you see this privacy tab. Privacy tab, all right. So go through these individual sections and make sure that 
you're comfortable using whatever Ubuntu has set by default. Connectivity checking is used to detect connection issues and help you stay online. No, I don't want anything tracking me. Thunderbolt, file history and trash. Do I want to keep a history of the, of the files and how long do I want to keep them? I'm going to set that to forever. I don't want them automatically being deleted. You can set automatic delete periods. Just check these right here and then set the uh, automatically delete period interval so you can be one hour up to 30 days. You can also clear your history, empty trash, and delete temporary files from here. Good thing to know about file history and trash. The screen lock. I don't like the screen going dark on me, so I set this to never. I don't automatically lock the screen, and I don't suspend anything, but I do show notifications if I am on my lock screen. Finally, diagnostics. Sending error reports to Canonical. I set this to manual. That means you get to select when an error report is generated, whether or not that goes to Canonical. Yes, it does help Canonical in order to know those errors that get generated on your system, but I don't like sharing information about my applications unless I specifically say so. This is actually set to automatic by default, so make sure to go in here and change it to manual or never. That way you're not sharing information without knowing. After all, that's what makes Linux great. All right, so exiting out of here, we're well on our way to setting things up here in Ubuntu. Another thing I always go through is I go into activities. I type in drivers and then select this additional drivers option. The additional drivers option will give you a dialog box and search for drivers that are available for your system. If you installed these while you were installing Ubuntu, depending on what graphics card you have or perhaps Bluetooth Wi-Fi adapter, you may have to select to run one of these additional drivers. For example, by default, Ubuntu was not using the NVIDIA proprietary graphics driver, which is about the only option you really have if you're running an NVIDIA graphics card. It's different if you're using AMD, but for me, I have to select one of these proprietary drivers in order to run things properly. I like staying up to date with the latest and greatest, so you have different options here. As you notice, the number at the end signifies what version number of the driver you're running. So you have 450, 470, the 470 server, the open source driver, or the latest and greatest testing driver, which is 510. I'm running 510 and I just simply run that by selecting this radio button and hitting apply changes. Now be forewarned that if you're changing something like the graphics driver, it may temporarily turn off your screen before it comes back on, but just make sure not to select something that is going to actually be incompatible with your system. For example, you wouldn't want to select an AMD or Meza driver for NVIDIA or even down here, this open source driver may or may not work depending on how new your graphics card is. Anyways, this is a great place to know about additional drivers. Check it out. One of the first things I check out. Updates is another section I go through and I get to select what kind of updates I'm subscribed to, whether or not I want just the security and recommended updates or all updates on my system. If you're in a production environment, you might want to actually go through security updates only. That way you're not constantly changing the libraries or compilation tools that you have on your computer which would cause all sorts of production environment problems. You can set how often you wanna check for these. I do mine on the daily, which is the default, but this is one thing I do change. I like to download them automatically, but I don't like it downloaded and applied automatically. So I'll change this to download automatically, and then it'll ask me if I wanna apply them. Also, if you want it to notify you of new Ubuntu versions, you can. I don't because I always start with a fresh install whenever a new version comes on, so I select never. It just gets annoying with that dialog box constantly popping up. A good place to just go and apply never for. And those are some of the basic things I set up as soon as my system is installed. I go up top also and make sure to select this do not disturb if you don't want to get messages constantly. It's a good thing to know about the do not disturb button up at the top. Another thing I'll mention is in activities, if you type in GNOME, you'll notice there's not really much for GNOME. Well, I like making changes to the GNOME desktop, which is the desktop environment here which that is default for Ubuntu. So I install an extra tool and we can do this again through the app store or terminal. I'm gonna select a terminal, again, just easier. And this time we'll do sudo apt install GNOME tweaks, or I think that's what it's called. Here we go, yep, GNOME tweaks is available. That's the one I want. Yes, that'll install things and I can clear out now. If I wanna launch GNOME Tweaks, I'll go back to Activities, type in Tweaks, and that should get me the Tweaks tool. Now notice why this is so great. 
you get to change up the appearance of your desktop environment, including applications, cursor icons, fonts, extensions that you want to show, what the keyboard and mouse does, what startup applications. You can even change up the top bar or status bar. And notice I can get rid of the date up top or add certain things to make it more clear. I got access to window title bars, windows, and workspaces. A great tool to have. And one thing I usually check or uncheck, window title bars. Here, I like to have both the minimize and maximize button. Not all Linux distributions come with this enabled. So GNOME Tweaks is a great tool to have if you're using the GNOME desktop environment. Very easy to use, but also very powerful in customizing your desktop. Exiting out of here, a few other things I like installing. I do use Thunderbird Mail, so I'm not gonna get anything for that. Rhythmbox, I typically just get rid of here. So I stop and quit and remove from favorites. LibreOffice is fine by me. It's a nice office suite. You can install OpenOffice or whatever else you like if you like using something else for your Word and Office processing needs. Short of that, I like installing GNOME boxes. So I'll do sudo apt install GNOME dash boxes. What this does is it's a tool that allows you to run virtual machines. So a virtualization software. If I go to activities and just type in boxes, now I can run my virtual machines in here. I already have one made here, GNOME OS Nightly, because I was testing a few things previously in GNOME OS for the new GNOME 42 version. If you want to check out that video, I'll make sure to put a link in the description below. It's an exploration of the GNOME 42 desktop version. Quite some exciting things coming with that GNOME desktop version. Hopefully we'll see it here in Ubuntu coming with the latest and greatest Ubuntu 22.04. Well, we're really close. One last thing I like to do is a specific library that helps me build and compile things. Again, in the terminal, we'll launch that one more time here. This will get you programming real quick if that's something you like doing. Really, there's two things. I do sudo apt install build essential. This will help you get the make command as well as GCC or G++ for compiling C and C++ programs. Finally, if you wanna install an IDE, I like using Codium, so I'll do snap install Codium, and I'll do the classic version. Type in my password for my administrative user, and that will download VS Codium. I can also get it from the store, which might be easier for you, so you don't have to use snap, by just typing in VS Code, and that should get you there to find it. Again, I'm not a big fan of using the store because it's slow. Sometimes I just don't have luck. Anyways, VS Codium was installed through the terminal method instead. If I just type in VS, and now I have VS Codium installed on my computer, I can start making edits to my various different programs or code. It's a great IDE, free and open source, available to anyone and everyone. A great project. I'll remove Firefox from here and actually start up Brave by adding that to my favorites. And now I have that there. You can move things around, of course, as necessary. And those are the main things that I like to install. Something for media, something for recording and streaming. Make sure my drivers are up to date and the proper ones are being used. I check software updates, my privacy, make sure to have a decent browser, and I'm well on my way to using Ubuntu with the apps that I like. Well, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.